things that you've been through, all the things you've been through, personal and professional, that's made you still stand the test of time, to still be in demand, to still be able to bring the performances that you're bringing in Studio City to be, you know, to be taking a hiatus for a little bit and literally walk right back in there like you own the fucking show like you always do. What do you feel for yourself is an advice that you would give somebody for longevity in this business? You got to shake it off, whatever it is that gets you down or shakes your confidence. You got to be able to shake it off uh, in order to move forward from it. So if you dwell on the mistakes you made in the last audition or the bad note that you got when the casting director called your agent and said, you know, your face is swollen or you didn't look right or you're too old at 26, you got to be able to have that thick enough skin that you recognize that they are not, uh, that's not God. You know, that is not the end of the road. Even getting blacklisted is not the end of the road. There's only so far that that can go and so far that that can affect your career. Having confidence in yourself, but staying humble, being kind to everyone on the set, being kind and good. Not show up. Most importantly, do not show up on a set without having run those lines into the ground until they are basically tattooed on your brain. Don't embarrass yourself. Know mm -hmm. your craft, know your work, study those lines because there's nothing really worse than that. I was watching uh, Tarantino's um, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood last night, night before last, and I was just stunned, <laughs> really incredible scene towards the end where Leonardo DiCaprio's you know, character goes up on set and he can't remember his lines. And then he goes into the trailer and just goes nuts on himself and looks in the mirror and says, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna shoot you tonight if you do this again, if you embarrass yourself. So that's the thing that you don't wanna do. You get that opportunity, don't embarrass yourself. Don't stay up the night before drinking. Don't go out, don't party with your friends. You know, Commit to your craft and, um, and honor yourself and, uh, and honor the crew and the cast that are gonna be working with you and the director who, who chose you. And at the end of it, when it's over, send a nice note and say thank you. You winning three Emmys, did you feel from the first time you won the Emmy? One, what did that mean to you? But winning three times an Emmy, did you feel that it put more pressure on you as a performer? I didn't feel pressured. I felt like now I need to go and do something else because, you know, th this is an incredible, incredible gift that if I just sit here with these gifts I've been given, which mm -hmm. meaning the, the Emmys, if I just sit here on this show with these Emmys, um, you know, oh, let me hold on to this. That's not me. <laughs> That's not what my team uh -huh to be scared, to be, uh, try to be fearless. In the, I got into acting to try to be fearless in the face of um, the inevitable, which is, which is rejection. You know, I got into it because I wanted to overcome obstacles in my way, not to be comfortable. And I think that when you get too comfortable in any given place that you're at, that you're complacent and your work is definitely going to suffer. Now, that's not necessarily true. Some actors keep themselves on the ball. They go home, they do it. They constantly work with coaches and they're constantly trying to bring up their game and make themselves better and better and better. But it is a really easy place to get complacent in because once you know a character, if you're playing the same character for six years, and especially in daytime, you say the same lines from day to day, pretty much, you know, they, they assume in daytime that the person didn't necessarily see the episode yesterday. So they repeat a lot of the dialogue. So it can get really easy to become complacent. And I didn't ever want to uh, be complacent. So even going back to a daytime show, but being on a new show with a new character felt like, okay, that's growing. Coming back to a show, playing a different character on the same show, that's growing but to play the same character for me personally uh, felt like I would be betraying what I got into the business for because I didn't get into it for the money. Who was your inspiration as an actor? Your biggest inspiration? Growing up? Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna laugh so hard at me. I'm almost embarrassed to say, seriously, Dolly Parton. 
Dolly Parton, wow. Nine, two, five. Yeah. Why? Why? I mean, Dolly when Parton? I was like eight years old, I'm walking, or however old, I, I think it was eight years old, I was walking around going, Texas has a whorehouse in it. And of course, it's... <laughs> but I didn't know what the actual words were in the song. I was mm -hmm. literally singing, Texas has a whorehouse in it. You know, uh, Burt, Burt Reynolds and uh, Cannonball Run and Dolly Parton. I loved, I loved their movies. And um, as a kid, that's what I was really, really drawn to. And there was a, another young actor who's just such an awful person that I won't bring up. So I'm just not gonna, you know, I'm like, no, I'm not gonna go there. But yeah, I wasn't really, the tele I wasn't allowed to watch television as a kid. I don't think I even mm -hmm. mentioned that. Part of the reason I didn't watch daytime or any of that is I was not allowed to watch TV as a kid. I was made to go outside and play and I was doing sports all day, every day. So I didn't have that opportunity. I loved films and uh, Dolly Parton was a star of the films that my dad would take me to see. And, you know, otherwise Gandhi, like we would go see Gandhi and <laughs> Ben Kingsley. But yeah, Dolly Parton, she was my idol. She Do you have a lives. drink near you right now? Do I have a drink? Yeah, but it's pretty much yes. wrong. Okay. I want to I wanna do a toast right now, because I'm not sure if you remember or if you know. Today is a day, an unfortunate day, that a lot of you watching this woke up to the news of someone who was my brother, someone who was family, who was one of the greatest men I've ever known, um, passed away on this day two years ago, Christophe St. John. And right now, wherever you're at, who's ever watching this, if you have a drink, I want to hold it up. I want to toast my brother, who I love, who I miss, who to me was not only an icon in this industry, but was a legend as a friend, as a mentor, as, as, a, as a beautiful human who we unfortunately lost far too soon. And I just want to say to anybody out there, Christoph always had a saying called love and light. Sarah, I love you. I respect you. I cherish you and I honor you, my friend. And I thank you so much for being such a beautiful human that has contributed to this business, contributed to this art, contributed to making our industry better. I'm a better person for knowing Christoph. I'm a better person for knowing you. I, I, I try to surround myself with people that inspire me. And to me in the sense when I, he was known as the Denzel of daytime. Yes, sir. And I look at you, my friend, my beautiful friend who I adore and I love as the Meryl Streep of daytime. Oh, please, no. You Stop are a person right now. Like <laughs> who has, to me, with you coming back into prime time with this new show and being able to see you bring the performances that you bring. It reminds me so much of Christoph, of the realness of the elements that he brought to his performances. So Christoph St. John, my brother, I love you. I miss you. I wish you were still here. And cheers to you, my friend. Cheers to Christoph, who I loved and adored and loved me. What did Christoph mean to you? I know what he meant to me. What did he mean to you? He was...